Hello. Hello, Monroe. Paloma. Hey, congratulations on Multiverse. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, so, you know, it, it's one of those uh, science fiction movies that uh, we always like to get into the debate about. But uh, let's start off with that easy question. What initially attracted um, you both into this uh, project? Who wants to start? I think it was the the challenge. The script like really presented a challenge not only as an actor because we have to play two different versions of ourselves, but also with how uh, complicated the story was to be able to pull that off. Um, and uh, both Monroe and I have uh, under under similar circumstances came onto the project because there was some um, c casting scheduling problems uh like a week or so before shooting and so they both Monroe and I were offered our roles um uh, pretty last minute and it was kind of like are you interested like uh, please come join us <laughs> and we both uh, read the scripts and we're like we're very excited and joined well I mean this is, this is a pretty complex script because you have to play two different characters how do you pr prep for that so fast then we thought of for myself personally, I thought of little ways that uh, Loretta would be different, like Loretta one would be different from Loretta two, although I had it a bit easier because you never really got to see much of Loretta one. So it was, I had it the easiest for sure. But also like thinking of little ways, we thought of all these little ways of um, visually they would be different. For example, my character has her hair parted <laughs> the opposite way. We thought of all these little things. I don't know if you catch in the movie, but there was a lot of thought put into it. <laughs> What about for you, Monroe? Yeah, for myself, what I like to do with any character is I like to root it with some sort of scar tissue in the back of his mind. So what's making him tick, what drives him, what's his purpose, what's his goal throughout it. And then uh, adding the other layer of Jerry 2, where he's obviously on medication for something. Well, now I've got a, a whole ocean of ideas uh, for somewhere to root that. Um, but, you know, you kind of just attach it to uh, some kind of emotional scar tissue. And then from there, you get to separate the two because the two different characters have to be bridged because this is the closest version or of many, many versions of, of that entity. So to make it close, but not too far away, but make them interesting. And for me personally, that's, that's my dream and goal as an actor. I, I, I grew up loving Rob Williams doing Fisher King and uh, Mrs. Doubtfire. So so to be able to, not something that, that kind of larger spectrum, but to be able to play two different roles that way and have dynamics, that's just, it was just uh, something you can't pass up. Was, was it easy to uh, not to, since everyone, everyone is playing two different roles, was it easy to not confuse everyone else's uh, doppelgangers in a film like this? Um, I mean, we, we would have to have conversations about where we walk, where we were, and who we were before every scene that we filmed, for sure. I had a little um, chart uh, timeline, so I'd be like, "Okay, uh, scene eighty-four. That's uh, after this and before this." So I would knew exactly where I was in the movie, so I wouldn't lose myself um, and try to, uh, most importantly, keep the audience with us on the ride. Obviously, Monroe, no, yeah, no, you had to. Every day was a conversation. Every day, every scene, it was like, okay, where we are, where are we going? Because like every film or most films, you never do it in order. So, you know, it was very smart diploma to have that arc and to have, the, to have that drawing and making sure we were all mapped out. We were doing our own little math and equations and stuff and figuring it all out. But you have to, you have to try to keep it seamless and, and hopefully people are watching it and, they, and it all, the puzzles all came together. And we were lucky, Gora was, our director was on it very much so, and he had like a very specific vision um, to the, for the film. So he like always had notes for us before we started filming that like put us where we needed to be. What, what, what do you guys think personally about the theory of the multiverse? Do you believe in it or not really? I do believe in multiverse. There has to be multiverses. I think so. <laughs> Monroe laughs at me every time I ask this question. <laughs> because I like that you know. Like, you, you've done, you have something in the back pocket. It's wonderful. Um, I think there are. And I think um, 
like there's there's even evidence in our world that we can affect atoms um, from like different places from different places. There's scientists who affect atoms like uh, hundreds of miles away, and they're trying to create like quantum entanglement um, and, and understand that better. Uh, so I think there has to be multi multiverses. I think that's where doppelgangers are from. I think that's there's there's got to be just like aliens. There's got to be multiverses. <laughs> yeah what paloma said because because she <laughs> even knows she has the literature done it's like no scientists have figured out the atom thing it's done it's to me quantum entanglements it's it's, an, it's like aliens but it's also like it's like ghosts there's too much evidence no i don't know about ghosts i don't think ghosts are real are you kidding me <laughs> come on now there's too much evidence i don't want to i don't like i don't like ghosts like the, you, you can't fight a ghost you can't <laughs> can't protect yourself from a ghost. But anyway, that's another conversation. So so what would you guys do if there was, you know, it, it comes down to that, you know, the, the theory of a doppelganger, yeah. um, where, where, where according to, to uh, you know, some legends, if you, that there's an actual doppelganger of you on this planet somewhere. And if you do actually meet your doppelganger, you have to kill him or her. Otherwise, they will kill you. That's a, that's a, that that was a, that was legend. So, what would yeah. you do if you do beat your doppelganger? Probably um, pretend to be really friendly, get to know them, and then kill them because only one of us can exist, and I'd like to be the one that exists. So, so, so you would you would kill your doppelganger? <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know. I would maybe try to. I'd probably um, that was a rash decision. I'd probably. Um, so that we could we could both exist in the world well we've been existing already for all this time why can't we exist now i don't understand i don't understand that part of the multiverse theory that what one has to die <laughs> what, what about you Monroe? well i so i've gone this double ganger multiverse thing since i was little because i'm an i'm a identical twin so i've been i've been battling my other self since i was in the womb <laughs> and we're both still here so <laughs> but if you had to, I think you got to try to, you got to try to live as, as one. You got to try to figure it out. Cause come on, you got to, you got to unite. And it's that like, is, it's, is true. <laughs> it's like King the Conqueror. It's like, you know, there's one, maybe the bad one. Then you got to, okay, you're done. Get out of here. But I don't know. <laughs> now, one, one, one of the um, best thing about this film is they, uh, you know, um, they, they brought in Sandra who, uh, you guys would have to commun communicate ASL uh, with how, how how was that uh, how was that part of acting on a project like this? We were so lucky to have Sandra. Like she not only is such a talented and seasoned actor, but she was um, so uh, sensitive with us and like forgiving of us uh, because none of us had worked with a deaf actor before, so we didn't. We didn't know the etiquette until meeting Sandra, and I believe actually the very first time I met Sandra, I met her without an interpreter. Um, in, I saw her; I knew it was her um, in our um, hotel uh, pub. She was eating, and I was like, "Oh, this is Sandra." I introduced myself, and I mean, it's just like talking to someone who speaks a different language. You you figure it out with gestures. I learned a lot of ASL from Sandra. Um, and, uh, when you can't figure something out, you write it down or you like type it on a phone. Um, they, it really wasn't as big of a challenge as I thought it was going to be to communicate with Sandra. That's one of the things I think was most rewarding for myself and for all of us, I think was, uh, you know, telling that story and bringing that story authentically. Um, personally, I've had, um, experiences in my career, I got to play, uh, certain characters being Tourette's, manic depressant, bipolar, things like that. And you want to make sure you're doing it justice. You're, those people who are living through that every single day, um, you want to make sure it's accurate. And to have that kind of open conversation with Sandra and for us to talk about little nuances and little etiquettes that you wouldn't know if you didn't have someone who was deaf in your circle. So like that for me, I don't, I don't have someone that I could reach to that is deaf that's in my circle. So to us to have that communication between our characters well, my character is going to act a little differently than Paloma's. And so that was really nice where Paloma's character was very, was using, was signing throughout where my character was like, no, you can read my lips. We're good. I'm, I'm not going to be signing as much. And that was kind of fun to create dynamics, but even just sidebar on 
telling that story like Paloma said Sandra is just such a giving actor and she's she's quite a quite a dance partner when we're when we're doing scene work and it was great to have some to have Sandra she was really confident in making sure that um things were changed in the script that didn't make sense like there were certain things that I, I mean I don't know because I'm not deaf that uh deaf the deaf community just doesn't do and so she made sure that like everything that was going on in the film was something realistic to uh, someone who is deaf which I think was really important now th this is such a small cast an ensemble film because of, of four of you guys and since you guys um at least you two were brought in at the last moment how, how did you guys you know develop the chemistry as you know friends and enemies uh you know so fast well part of the i think we were able to do it uh offset a lot like we'd go to bars or we'd uh, you know go to restaurants and hang out because we were all um we were filming in Sudbury none of us are from there so we we're all on location so that really helped us getting closer together um, but it's also, it also just comes a part of the job. You know, you meet someone brand new and you're like, Hey, we've been in a marriage for 20 years and I love you. And you got to create that. And sometimes it's easier than others. And, and on this project, it was easy, you know, and I think that helps because, um, I can just speak for myself. I was blessed to be working with such giving actors and they, we're just being, um, we're just volleying the entire time and dancing. It was, it was just wonderful. And, uh, you mentioned uh, Gaurav as, you know, as, as the director, because uh, one of the things that I, I was actually, you know, curious about this film is that it has a lot of sci-fi elements of storytelling, but because it is an indie project, you know, they had a, you know, you, you don't have the special effects. And I know both of you have been on projects with a lot of special effects. Was, was this more challenging or more enjoyable um, to do something uh, like this where, where it doesn't have, you know, all that pizzazz going on all over the place? The pizzazz can be distracting, or also it can be less grounding because all this kind of stuff that happens, all the special effects happens obviously after filming's done. So it's a lot of like reacting to things that aren't there. <laughs> Whereas at least on this film, there wasn't anything supernatural or big or something that we have to react to. It was all very grounded. And that was the thing that when I read the script, um, th one of the things that made me actually go, oh, you know what? I think this this script can be pulled off. Sometimes I read script and I'm like, this is there's a lot going on here, and there's like a very low budget. Like I just don't think that we have what it takes to pull this off. Like I think this needs to be re reworked a bit. Whereas this was um, very much so character driven. Um, and when I talked to Gorev, he had all these uh, thoughts and uh, ideas to have this very stylized kind of eerie vision with a lot of mirror shots and things to bring us into this kind of uncomfortable world. And so I felt comfortable knowing that like that, that we would be able to pull it off. Monroe? Yeah, I'm just, I'll just be echoing what Paloma said, but it just helps you ground. It keeps it grounded. You got to try to keep it as natural as possible. And whether you're doing, um, I was able to do uh, motion capture in my career and that's something where you have nothing. You have absolutely nothing and you have to have the entire imagination. So when you actually have those tangibles and something you can touch, you can feel, you can look at and you create the whole world around you, that's always beneficial when you're trying to create something um, real. And I, and I think for a film like this, you had to rely on uh, bo body doubles, right? Uh, that, that, was, that was your guys' interactions, am I correct? Yeah. Yes which is always a bit uh, strange <laughs> when you're acting with someone who's not even um, uh, even an actor and they're just, you know, they're just there to, to, for you to have something. Um, it is, it does provide a bit of a challenge because then you're not, you're not actually, you're not actually playing your performance against um, the performance that's going to be on screen, if that makes sense. So you're imagining how this scene's gonna go with just yourself. <laughs> so, so in rea in reality, you don't really know the real performance until you actually see the movie, and then and then and then you finally yeah. know if you did a good job or not. Exactly, because normally, Always. normally you have a scene partner and you're reacting to your scene partner, and you guys, like Monroe was saying, are doing a bit of a dance together. So when you're by yourself in a scene with yourself. You're just doing your side and then your side again. 
so it, for sure you have to, um, you kind of have to like remember the choices you made on one side to affect the other side. Uh, so it is a bit complicated. <laughs> so um, as, as I'm starting to wind down, um, for, for both of you, how do you, how do you choose your projects that, that you, you would you'd like to work on? Because this is a very indie project, but you also have done, you know, action films or, you know, like uh, Monroe did motion capture and all this kind of stuff. I mean, when, when you get these scripts, what, 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 make, what makes you like saying, I want to do this? Um, I think there has to be an element for me, there has to be an element that will challenge me, uh, so a story that excites me or a story that I feel really needs to be told. Um, uh, or if it's something now that I've worked, I have, I have, you know, a few credits to my name. If it's some, if I know that I'm working with someone that I've worked with before and I've had a great experience before, then I'm usually like very happy to jump on board knowing that, that, that we'll just get to work together again. Um, cause it normally works out <laughs> like it did with Monroe. <laughs> Monroe? It's tough cause you, in this industry, a huge percentage of the industry never gets to pick and choose. And for most of your career, you really don't. You audition and you audition 99 times and maybe get the yes. So whenever you get the chance to play, whenever you get the chance to actually create and be a part of something, it's always a blessing. You know, that's what, that's what makes this so special is that you're not in it for the, you know, the fame or the consistency because that doesn't exist. You, you do it because you love creating. And so whenever you get that opportunity, um, especially something that um, uh, gets your creative juices flowing and you get excited about it, you have to say yes. And um, you just got to remember how, how special it is and how lucky you are to be able to be a part of it. That is terrific. Well, I, I have I have one last question. It's specifically for Paloma is because uh, um, Paloma, I've, I've, I've seen you in, in a few movies already. And I want to know is, do you get to choose your hairstyle in <laughs> each of these different movies? I mean, you're, you know, th this movie had one hairstyle. Percy Jackson had another. You were in Riot Girls, and that that had a totally different hairstyle. I mean, it's. I mean, I think um, Riot Girls was the actually Percy Jackson. I had to dye my hair because I had to fit a description like as uh, from the book, um, and then Riot Girls. They they were they really wanted me to shave my head, and then last minute they decided they instead wanted a mohawk, and I was on board, no problem. And then I think and Entangled was actually a year after the Mohawk, so I hadn't had a chance to grow my hair out. So that's thus why my hair's short in that film. Um, so yeah, my demo reel is pretty awesome because I have a, <laughs> a huge array of different hairstyles. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? That's, that's dedication. That is for sure. <laughs> Paloma Monroe, hey, Thank you very much uh, for speaking to us about the multiverse. This is an enjoyable conversation. And hopefully I get to talk to you guys again um, in your next project. Yeah, for sure. Thank you Absolutely. so much. Hey, thank you. Bye.